A portion of this video is sponsored by EcoFlow. As the renewable energy sector continues to grow, so does our need for better and cheaper energy storage, which is why our reliance on lithium could become a bit of a problem. While there are already an assortment of energy storage options available today beyond lithium batteries for grid-scale storage, like compressed air and pumped hydro, there's still a search for the next big thing to satisfy our need in all the other use cases. And one possible rising star is aluminum-based batteries, which don't require rare earth metals, and they can charge faster and could be cheaper and easier to recycle. And there are two exciting breakthroughs that we have to examine, and some of the benefits of these are kind of astounding. Now, how do they work, and can they really compete with lithium-ion batteries? Let's take a closer look. So why do I talk about batteries so much on my channel? Well, our push towards more mobile electronic devices and vehicles, plus renewable energy sources, is driving the need for a variety of cutting edge energy storage technology. Now, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, just renewable energy production alone will make up 85% of all energy produced worldwide. Solar and wind will make up 22 and 36% of that respectively. The problem is that these energy sources are intermittent and need energy storage to unlock their full potential. Over 90% of the world's grid battery storage market is currently accounted for by lithium ion batteries, making them the most common type for portable electronics to grid energy storage. The advantages of lithium ion batteries include conversion efficiency, high power density, low self discharge, and good service life. It's pretty clear why they're the reigning battery champ for not just the grid, but for everything from EVs to smartphones. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows for lithium ion batteries. They have a relatively high cost, have flammability issues if they're not managed properly, which leads to their need for power management to maintain safe operation. Now, lithium extraction isn't exactly environmentally friendly process right now either, but companies like EnergyX are trying to solve that. And recycling has been an issue, but that's also getting solved by a bunch of leading recycling companies like Redwood Materials, Lycycle, and Recyclico. Now, I've got videos on all of those if you're interested, so I'll put links in the description. This is when the new contender for the battery crown enters the ring, but it feels like we have a new battery emerging almost every week, right? <laughs> well, here on the channel, we've covered several kinds of novel batteries that promise to overcome conventional battery issues. Now, some of those are just hitting the market now, and others are still in the lab. These aluminum batteries overcome some of the same issues, and they really caught my eye because of the simplicity and availability of cheap materials combined with some crazy performance. So what is aluminum ion all about? Well, just a quick refresher for how a battery works, the key components of a battery are the positive and negative electrodes, which are the cathode and the anode. And in between the electrodes is a separator made of a membrane or a polymer, along with an electrolyte to help shuttle the ions back and forth between the electrodes. Now, electrons moving between these electrodes through the electrolyte make the battery charge and discharge. Now, aluminum ion batteries are conceptually very similar to lithium ion batteries, but there's one clear difference between the two of them that gives aluminum the edge. It can exchange up to three electrons per ion, while lithium can only exchange one. That means it can take up to three lithium ions to equal one aluminum ion. The higher number of electrons per aluminum ion means a higher theoretical power density and capacity. Now there are challenges to that though, which we'll get to in a bit, but that higher number of electrons per ion means a high theoretical volumetric capacity of 8,046 milliamp hours per cubic centimeter, which is about four times greater than lithium, which is about 2,062 milliamp hours per cubic centimeter and a gravimetric capacity of 2,980 milliamp hours per gram, which is close to lithium metal at 3,860 milliamp hours. Now, on top of that, aluminum ion is safer, potentially cheaper, and doesn't have the same flammability concerns as lithium. Enough about theory. What about in the real world? Well, the University of Queensland, for example, published their research on a graphene aluminum ion battery in 2021. The Australian company Graphene Manufacturing Group, or GMG, has exclusive access to the University of Queensland technology to commercialize graphene aluminum ion batteries. Now, GMG is working towards producing commercial battery solutions for watches, phones, laptops, electric vehicles, and grid storage. Before getting into the details of how their battery works and all the exciting benefits that it brings, there's another battery that you can get for yourself today, and that's from today's sponsor, EcoFlow. I'm genuinely a big fan of EcoFlow's products because of how flexible and drop-dead simple their entire range of products are. And the EcoFlow Smart Generator Dual Fuel is a perfect example of that. It's a generator that can act as a backup to the EcoFlow Delta Max or the Delta Pro Power Kits. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't recharge your battery with solar, this can charge up your Delta Pro in about 2.7 hours. And the Dual in its name is because it can run off of either its four liter gas tank to generate 5.4 kilowatt hours and run for up to about three and a half hours, or it can be hooked up to a propane tank. A 20 pound tank can generate up to 20 kilowatt hours of power, which is more than enough to charge up your Delta Max or Pro when you're out of options. 
That's incredibly efficient at generating 1800 watts of output. It has an electric start that you can trigger manually or with the app or automatically. It even monitors CO levels, fuel, oil, temperature to alert you if there's any problems. For a generator, it's pretty quiet and very easy to maintain. I love having this as a backup to my backup. Now, if you're in the market for any of EcoFlow's products, EcoFlow is running the biggest promo of the year for Black Friday as we speak, some up to 50% off. Check out the links in the description below to find your best choice and best offer on the Black Friday promo until November 28th. And just for you, this is for my channel specifically, you can take an extra 8% off with the code FERALBF8. Thanks to EcoFlow and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to how GMG's battery works. The innovative graphene aluminum ion batteries operate in a similar way to conventional batteries. The technology uses aluminum and graphene rather than traditional graphite. GMG uses a plasma technique to manufacture graphene layers, which are so closely layered that the aluminum chloride atom that they're using, which is about 5.5 nanometers in size, can't fit between the carbon atom, which are about 0.3 nanometers in between. They essentially drill tiny holes in the carbon layers, which happens to the manufacturing process, where the aluminum chloride atoms can sit. Now, all these structures and densely packed aluminum atoms make the graphene aluminum battery achieve a charge rate up to 70 times faster than lithium ion cells, according to the company. Now, for example, a cell phone could charge in minutes with these batteries. The limiting factor isn't how much energy the battery can take, but the cable providing the power to the battery. I had a chance to interview Craig Nickel, the founder and CEO of GMG, and he provided me with some details. Our battery is basically just carbon and aluminum, both extremely conductive, uh, and has a very, very low, basically insignificant internal resistance. But when you take an internal resistance across a lithium battery, it's, it's actually quite a high. Carbon is well known for trapping heat. Uh, <laughs> There's a little thing called global warming because of its ability to trap heat. And we see it, um, it has enormous ability to be able to trap and spin heat out. We've tested this battery uh, at um, already quite high temperatures, well above what lithium batteries with no issue. So fast charging doesn't seem to be an issue. The bottom line is that graphene and aluminum are excellent at transferring heat out and away from the cell which would reduce the need for complex cooling and battery management systems. And the cells have a decent performance too, with a power density equal to about 150 watt hours per kilogram. But that's much lower than what we typically see for lithium ion, which sits around 250 to 300 watt hours per kilogram. However, that aluminum ion performance has shifted recently because these numbers have been increasing and can go even higher. When we first started a year ago, we uh, announced that we had an energy density of about 150 watt hours per kilogram. When we announced earlier this week, we're now at 300 watt hours per kilogram. We're only using one electron, but it has the potential for three times. Aluminum is a metal that's far more abundant in the environment than lithium. In fact, it's the most abundant metallic element in the Earth's crust, and the third most abundant element overall behind oxygen and silicon. This means that graphene aluminum batteries won't have the scarcity problem like rare earth metals and lithium ion batteries do. Moreover, compared to lithium, aluminum is safer and more recyclable. It's already one of the world's most recycled metals. There's a huge potential there of having a very low emissions base product. We aim to be a very low emissions producer of our battery in the first place. We're trying to get as low emissions on our graphene production as possible. And then obviously aluminium does create a lot of emissions to make, but it's 90% recycled type material. And then we're working with Rio Tinto to, to look to see how we can take their, their low emissions um, aluminium or zero emissions aluminium. So we put those together, so we have a very low emissions produced battery, and then it has thousands of cycles, and at the end we can recycle it. The first graphene aluminum battery pouch cells were produced in June of 2022, and GMG also plans to produce the first commercial facility for producing graphene aluminum batteries, which are used to make coin cells. And the business plans to start producing pouch cells for the EV market by 2024. Of course, money talks in this industry, and in the battery cells, the cathode represents about 51% of the total battery cost. In a typical lithium ion battery, the cathode is composed of lithium and other metals such as cobalt, nickel, and manganese. Now, comparing the metal prices, lithium costs around $13,000 per ton, while cobalt, nickel, and manganese are currently priced at $71,000, $24,000, and $2,500 per ton. Now, aluminum is much cheaper than those metals, costing around $2,078 per ton. Finding pricing data for graphene production is pretty tough, and it varies wildly. But one report I found came out to about $100 per gram. However, that cost is dropping rapidly, and it's not clear how much it's costing GMG to manufacture their specific blend. So GMG is clearly at the pilot phase and starting to try to commercialize this aluminum ion tech. But looking a little further out, because it's still in the lab, there's a piece of tech coming from research at MIT. 
they've developed an aluminum sulfur battery that shows some very cool potential and published the research in the journal Nature. Now, this battery was tested at 100 cycles at a high capacity of 520 milliamp hours per gram and has a high energy density of around 526 watt hours per liter. Now, their tech focused on using cheap and abundant elements, but it's the electrolyte which is the most surprising. Now, aluminum and sulfur are used as the two electrode materials with a molten salt electrolyte. This electrolyte has several advantages, such as a low melting point. The chloroaluminate salt prevents dendrites and the occurrence of short circuiting, as well as for allowing very fast charging. And what's really interesting is that the charging rate improves the hotter the battery gets. It can charge 25 times faster at around 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit versus 25 degrees or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also non-flammable, which reduces the risk of fire. It's anticipated that this device could be used for small-scale stationary storage, automotive applications, and all the way up to powering homes and businesses. Regarding costs, MIT predicts that their aluminum sulfur battery cell to be as low as $9 per kilowatt hour, which is about 12 to 16% of today's lithium ion battery cell cost. Now, obviously this still needs to get out of the lab, but it's not a risky assumption to make that the cheaper cost of materials will have a big impact on final production cost. Now, although GMG and MIT batteries sound really promising, they share similar challenges. Perhaps one of the biggest challenges for aluminum ion batteries, practical application and commercialization, is the aluminum reaction inside the battery. The metal can form alumina and dendrites and suffer corrosion, which can drop efficiency and, of course, the safety. Now, the self-corrosion needs to receive some attention to facilitate the aluminum ion practical applications because it can cause irreversible consumption of the aluminum anode, which reduces the energy density and lifespan. The utilization of corrosion inhibitors such as zinc oxide and the development of alloys with magnesium, zinc, tin, indium, and gallium seems to reduce the self-corrosion rate. Now, from an economic perspective, demand for aluminum ion batteries has the potential to outpace other battery technologies in the future, primarily as a potential replacement for lithium ion batteries in the electric car sector. Now, the global aluminum ion battery market had a value of about $4.2 billion in 2021, and taking into account all of the advantages, metal sources, and widespread use, the market is expected to reach $8 billion by 2031. As I pointed out in my previous solid-state battery video, we have to find better battery technologies that can provide increased energy density, better lifespan, safety, and cost less to move away from fossil fuels and unlock the potential of our all-electric future. So will we ever see aluminum ion batteries in the real world? Well, it's looking more likely by the day. GMG's battery is an important step towards commercialization, but is still in the works. Aluminum sulfur is still in the lab, but shows exciting possibilities. No matter what, it's not about one technology killing another, but about finding the right tool for the right job. Having more options available to us like aluminum ion is a good thing. So what do you think? Do you think that these aluminum batteries have a shot? And would you want one in your phone or your car? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones over here. And thanks as always to my patrons for your continued support. You really make these videos possible. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.